Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading SCP-2287, also known as Mr. Headless, number two in the Little Mr. series, if you remember that. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, I think this is the third or fourth... Hmm, I think it might be the fifth one in this series that we're doing, actually. Alright, let's get right into this. Item number, SCP-2287. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-2287 is to be contained in Hall Redacted of Site Redacted. Except for during authorized testing, SCP-2287's mask is not to be removed. SCP-2287 does not require food, but can be provided with incense on its request, contingent on good behavior. Literature provided to SCP-2287 is to be converted into brew. Description SCP-2287 is a headless humanoid white male who manifests multiple anomalous properties. Primary among these is that it is able to function as a living being despite lacking a head. The words Mr. Headless from Little Misters by Octo Entertainment are tattooed on the lower side of SCP-2287's back. Its exposed neck stump is covered with live skin. Radiographic examination has shown that the neck stump has only the bottom of four cervical vertebrae. But there are no signs of spinal damage. The head based functions which SCP 2287 is able to emulate include thought, hearing, and smell. It is able to speak but has not demonstrated the ability to replicate the normal tonalities of a human voice. As well, it claims to be blind. It does not eat or breathe and has claimed that its energy source may be some kind of amplified photosynthesis or something. See interview log of 41B. I'm not seeing that log anywhere. Direct visual observation of SCP-2287's headlessness is not possible. Individuals who attempt to observe this once edit for receive headless versions of themselves, as seen from SCP-2287's perspective. Such individuals describe feeling disconnected from themselves, but are still able to control the movements of their own bodies, albeit with difficulty. This effect does not occur when SCP-2287 is viewed through any means other than the unaided human eye. SCP-2287's headlessness can be observed via live video transmission, and photographic prints and mirrors, and through windows or lenses. In order to have undergone radio, radio keratomy have been unable to observe headlessness. No individuals who have undergone cataract surgery have as yet been available for or testing. Motion detectors and similar monitoring equipment similarly show SCP-2287 to be headless. Despite this, SCP-2287 is capable of performing tasks which would require a head, such as wearing items of headgear including masks, hats, scarves, headphones, nose plugs, earplugs, earrings, eyeglasses, lipstick, and barrettes. For a full list of items, see document 2287 and 12, which is another document that does not seem to exist. SCP-2287 was discovered in Redacted, Wisconsin on November 24th, 20 Redacted, after a significant number of reports from citizens appeared describing the anomalous effects of SCP-2287. Witnesses were given amnestic treatment and 2287 was contained without issue. Interview 2287-5 Oh, we have names. No redacting the name in here, I guess, so I don't get to make one up. We have Dr. Howard and 2287. Begin log. Good evening, SCP-2287.
Hey, Dr. Howard, what's up? More hearing experiments? No, actually, this is more of an interview. For instance, we were wondering what you could tell us about Dr. Wondertainment. Oh, uh, okay. I'll tell you what I can, but I never actually saw her. You know, what with the whole be line to thing. But you did interact with her? With who? Oh, Dr. Wondertainment? Yeah. Heck of a nice guy, most of the time, I think. He had some really crazy ideas, like what he had in mind for me, see... Wait, wait, first you said her, then you said he. What? First you referred to Dr. One Entertainment as a man, then... Uh, sorry. First you referred to Dr. One Entertainment as a woman, then as a man. I... I don't understand what you mean. Like, Dr. Wondertainment as an actual person? What are you talking about? You're confusing me. But you just said... No, I'm sorry. I must have misheard. My bad. Well, okay, for a minute that you're making zero sense at all. And they call me headless. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, when you work for the Foundation for long enough, you discover many situations that don't entirely make sense. You did say, though, that Watertainment had intended spe something specific for you? Oh, yes, right. Well, basically, you know how, the, how during the holidays there's special holiday-themed products? Yes. So basically, I'm a Halloween special, you know? You follow? Yeah. That's it? Yep, the way I heard it, they were originally going to do the Sweetie for Halloween, but I don't know, some corporate garbage executives sabotaging each other, you know how it goes. So I'm the backup plan, sit me on the porch, I play dead, and then when the kids come by, woo, I sit up and wave my arms at them, shut up my stump. Look, look, everyone's a headless monster. Let's round, 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 the whole deal. Dr. One Entertainment's Mr. Headless. Spooky Halloween fun for the whole family. I see. And are you... fun for the whole family, I mean? Well, I guess so. For the most part, I mean, yeah, people enjoyed me, which is great, don't get me wrong, but I never really got on my stuff, you know? I sit there, I get up, I stand around, I wave my arms, and that's pretty much it. People would be scared and they'd have fun and that's enough for me. Or it was. I mean, until you people got a hold of me. Could be worse, I guess. Did you enjoy entertaining? Do you miss it? Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, it could get a bit boring when I'd have to stand around, sit around, waiting for people to show up. But it was really great hearing everyone's reaction on Halloween, no less. It's funny pe how people only find scary stuff funny one night a year, you know? But how many times you live through a year, they only change their minds on Halloween. Are you the only, well, the only holiday-themed, uh... Hey, you can say Little Mister. I don't mind, it's what I am. I suppose, it just, well, it sounds vaguely infantilizing to me. That's what Dr. Er er Entertainment said we were called. So that's what we're er called. But yeah, I'm the only holiday-themed little mister. At first, Dr. Entertainment was planning on having more of us, but I remember she had all these ideas for Mr. Er Ramadan and Miss Esmas and Itza and Mr. Diwali and Miss Yom Kippur and Mr. Hagmane, but she never did anything with any of them. Just me. How do you feel about that? 
never really thought about it, to be honest. I guess maybe he decided I'd be more interesting if I was the only one. Or maybe he just changed his mind during about doing holiday stuff. He changes his mind a lot, you know? What do you get when there's a whole bunch of corporate jerks all making decisions against each other? That's why I Mr. Headless. Spooky Halloween fun for the whole family. Instead of Mr. Halloween. Do you see yourself as scary? I see myself as someone who brings surprise and excitement. When they get scared, that means I'm doing a good job. Although, well, it's been getting hard lately. The doctor is a one unmanned operation and she doesn't realize or didn't realize how many kids wear glasses these days. Whenever I lived through a year like this with cameras and stuff like that, the effect is pretty much ruined. I mean, yes, I'm still scary, Mr. Headless, spooky Halloween fun for the whole family, but it doesn't seem to be as much fun for the people when they don't get to be headless with me. When we found you back in Wisconsin, could you tell us what you were doing there? Well, you found me? Well, I spent a few years there with this family. I think by that point, they were consecutive years. But I couldn't swear to that. I do know that some of them and were for sure years that I hadn't lived in before. You know, a year always feels weird the first time around, right? They mostly felt like that. Anyways, so the family I was with, they mostly kept me in the attic. Which was... Well, it was quiet. I remember sometimes I could hear noises from downstairs if they were being loud enough, but usually it was quiet. I was very used to the smell. There was mildew and dust and old paper. I didn't know the way a metal pipe smell when they get hot. It was like that. They bring me down for Halloween, then put me back up afterward. And then one Halloween, they didn't come get me. So I didn't come down that year. I know that year was definitely a new year. They didn't come get me the year after either, or the year after that. And that's when I started to get worried about them, so I went downstairs and I couldn't find anybody. I felt around everywhere, but all the furniture and stuff was all gone too. Maybe they moved and forgot me? And that's what led to you wandering the city streets? Yeah, I waited around for a few weeks and then some people opened this door to the front and or it's where the candy ball usually is. They came in. I didn't recognize their voices, but an audience is an audience, right? So I went back downstairs from the attic and they will they kinda of freaked out, I guess. I mean I'm used to hearing people scream, but not like that. One of them had a uh what's it called? A metal thing you hold in your hand and makes a sort of pop noise and it smells off chemically and then people get hurt a gun okay yeah one of them had a gun which i only found out when i walked up up to her and tried to feel her face which i admit wasn't the best idea but well i was kind of lonely to be honest and i thought she might be one of the people from the family you know i mean yeah i should have asked first but i was lonely and i was excited that there was someone there and i thought it was maybe somebody i knew but it wasn't and then there was all the screaming and the gun noises and this was bad screaming, not the fun kind at all, let me tell you. And then one of them was lying on the floor and something and smelling weird. That means he was dead, right? One of them was dead and the others ran away, but they left the door open. So they decided that was as good a time as any to go outside. So then I'm walking in the streets and there's cars all around me and they're honking each other, making all these crashing noises with glass breaking. And there were a lot of people screaming. And again, this is the bad screaming. But then I remember there's usually a park close to the house. And I hope that if I went there... Uh, there were bushes and stuff that I could hide in, I could at least stay out of trouble. So I made it there and I remember thinking... If I could get back to Dr. One Entertainment, she could fix things up. Help the guy from the house not be dead. Figure out what went wrong, where the family went. Or get somebody new to take me. And uh, that's pretty much where you guys found me. She didn't send you, did she?
Ah, no, we intercepted some police reports. Oh. Tell me, why didn't you go back into the house? Into the attic? Um, this is kind of embarrassing. I kind of, when I was out in the street with all the cars, I kind of got turned around a bit, lost my bearings. I'm not used to being out in places that are bigger than a house and a yard. I probably could have found a house again if there weren't so many screaming people and crashing cars, but well... I was starting to panic too, so I just went for the place that sounded like there weren't any buildings. Ah, I see. And why didn't you try to leave sooner? Well, the front door wasn't open before or that. No, I mean, why did you wait so long before you even went downstairs? Before you decided that maybe something was wrong with you having been left alone in the attic for so long? Ah, uh, well, I guess I didn't really care. I was thinking the attic was really quiet and the smell wasn't too bad. Maybe it's to think. That's something I do a lot, you know? While I'm waiting, not much else to do. What do you think about, you know? Uh, sorry. What do you think about? Just things, you know? Things in general. The world, what it might be like, what's it like being me? Nothing specific, I guess. But for three years? Yeah? Why? Addendum 2287-1. SCP-2287 was able to give the following document when asked. And yes, we are going to read it in full, as we do with every single Little Misters at the end of the e e main e thing. Wow, you just found yourself your very own Little Mister, a limited collect, a limited edition collection from Doctor Wondertainment. Find them all and become Mister Collector. Zero one, Mister Chameleon. We've actually read Mister Chameleon before. Zero two, Mister Headless. That's what we're reading right now. Zero three, Mr. Laugh. That might be in the near future. Zero four, Mr. Forgetful. I think that's the last one we read. Zero five, Mr. Shapey. Zero six, Mr. Soap. Zero seven, Mr. Hungry. Zero eight, Mr. Brass. Zero nine, Mr. Hot. Ten, Miss Sweetie. We've read that one. Eleven, Mr. Life and Mr. Death. I feel like that one is really familiar for some reason. 12, Mr. Fu. <laughs> Sorry. 12, Mr. Fish. 13, Mr. Moon. You can see what I did there by accident. 14, Mr. Red. Discontinued. That one's a long story. We'll get to that when I have more time. 15, Mr. Money. 16, Mr. Lost. 17. Redacted. 18. Mr. Mad. 19. Mr. Scary. Did I read Mr. Scary? Or did I just look at it and decide not to read it at some point in time? 20. Mr. Stripes. I don't think I've read Mr. Scary. 2933. No, I did not. Oh, that's why. It's because, um... So it is supposed to be a little mister, but... Doesn't really look like it, you know? Alright. Anyway, that was, um... SCP-2287, also known as Mr. Headless. 
If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!